All right, guys. Okay, so it is uh, nearly the end of September. I can't believe it already. Um, and welcome to our call. I am going to go ahead and start our video. It's probably about 15 minutes today. It's a, it's, it's three, it's a, it's a talk um, from Simon Sinek that he gave to a group of leaders. Um, and I know that's where we're all at. We got all of our leaders here on tonight's call. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's do this. Up my desktop. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Thanks very much. So Colonel Dusek said that she was entering the 21st century by reading her remarks from the iPad. Um, I'm stepping back into the 18th century. I have my remarks written on the back of an envelope. Can y'all see? For the awardees today, this is for you. And so what I thought I would do is share a couple of stories about what it means to lead, some pointers as you begin the next journey of your life, the next part of the journey of your life. This is by no means a complete list, but a few ideas. One of the things that you will have to do as you grow up is to understand how and when to seize an opportunity. I went for a run with a friend of mine around Central Park. And every week or so, there's an organization that organizes races in Central Park. So we were doing one of these formal races. And very often they have a sponsor and they'll give something away for free at the end, apples or something. On this particular day, they were giving away free bagels. And we passed the finish line and there was a you know, few cafeteria tables laid up next to each other. And on one side of the cafeteria tables were volunteers handing out bagels. There were boxes of bagels on the tables and then a long line of runners waiting to be given their free bagel. So I said to my friend, let's get a free bagel. And he says, nah, man, I don't want to stand in the line. And I said, free bagels. <laughs> He's like, nah, I don't want to stand in the line. I was like, free bagels. And that's when I realized there was two kinds of people in this world. There are people who see the thing they want, and there are people who see the thing that's preventing them from getting the thing they want. And so I went up to the line, I leaned in between the line, I put my hands in between a couple of people, I grabbed a couple of bagels, and I got us free bagels. And this is the point, which is you're allowed to take shortcuts, and you're allowed to go out to the thing you want. What you're not allowed to do is push someone out, of, someone out of the way and deny them getting the thing that they want. No one got mad at me because I didn't cut the line. I didn't push myself into the line. I simply leaned in. What I sacrificed was choice. I didn't get to choose what I wanted. And this is the point. Stay fixated on the thing you want. Go after the thing you want. Use any means necessary to get the thing you want. But do not deny anybody else from getting the thing that they want. Lesson two. Tell the truth. It's the most important thing you can ever do. I visited Quantico Marine Base in Quantico, Virginia. And the day I was there, total coincidence, there had been an incident. And so we sat down for a meeting with the Colonel, the boss of Quantico. He was gonna give us a briefing on what goes on at Quantico. And he showed up a few minutes late. You know it's a big deal when Marines show up a few minutes late. And he apologized. He said, I'm terribly sorry I've been dealing with this incident we're considering throwing one of our Marines out of OCS. In other words, throwing them out of the Marine Corps. And I thought, this must be serious. I mean, to get thrown out of the Marine Corps. So I said, what did he do? Thinking he broke, you know, what crime did he commit? And the Colonel said, he fell asleep on watch. And I said, that's it? He fell asleep on watch in the woods of Virginia. And you're gonna throw him out for that? You guys are tough. He says, no, you don't understand. When we asked him about it, he denied it. When we asked him about it again, he denied it again. 
And only when we gave him irrefutable proof did he say, quote, I want to take responsibility for my actions. The problem we have is you take responsibility for your actions at the time you perform your actions, not at the time you get caught. He said, we had another Marine that fell asleep. He admitted it, he got punished. We have no problem with him. The Colonel went on to explain to me that he cannot put this would-be leader in a position of responsibility for the lives of other human beings. If they're downrange and for one minute, if his men doubt that the words coming out of their leader's mouth are anything but the truth, if they think that he's saying anything to cover his own hide or to make himself look better, trust will disintegrate and people will die. The amazing thing is we don't have to be in positions of life or death for people to earn our trust, for people to want to follow us and believe that we have their interests in mind and not our own. The single greatest thing you can learn to do to earn the trust of those around you is to tell the truth, good or bad, whether it puts you in a good light or a bad light. Telling the truth is really easy, or being honest is really easy. It's just about telling the truth. And so I have a little challenge for you for the next 48 hours, just to prove how difficult it is. So what's the time now? It's about quarter past 12 on, was it Friday today, right? So until quarter past 12 on Sunday, you may not tell a single lie. It's really hard. <laughs> Because we're conditioned to tell lies. It's not always a bad thing. Somebody gives you a birthday present and you think it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen. And they say to you, do you like it? Do you say no? Or do you say, thank you, I love it? Which is a lie. <laughs> so you have to find other way, nice ways of saying things. If somebody says, do I look fat in these jeans? You then say, yes. You say, I like the other ones on you better. The point is for the next 48 hours, try not telling a lie. Number three, ask for and accept help. The biggest mistake people make is thinking that they have to know all the answers or thinking if they don't, that they have to pretend they do. One of the biggest failures of most leaders is the belief that their leadership credibility comes from their intelligence. It doesn't. There was a retired captain from the Navy, Captain David Marquet, who was a career naval officer, submariner, who was given the, one of the greatest honors any naval officer could ask for, he was given command of his own submarine, a Los Angeles class nuclear powered fast attack sub. How cool is that? He was gonna be given command of the USS Olympia, and it was one of the best rated crews in the whole fleet. And Marquet, like many, believed that his credibility as a leader would be based on his own intelligence. And so he studied that boat for a year. He spent a year on board learning every screw, every nut, every bolt, every valve. He studied the dossiers of his crew. He knew everything about who they were, where they come from, what their educations were. He was going to be a good captain. Two weeks before he took command of the Olympia, he got a phone call that told him, you won't be the captain of the Olympia, you will be the captain of the Santa Fe. And by the way, it's the worst rated crew in the entire United States submarine fleet. They ranked last or close to last in almost every readiness measurement the Navy had. Marquet didn't want to let anybody know that he was a little bit unfamiliar with the slightly newer ship, so he kept it to himself. And he also, he's still an ambitious guy with a big ego, and he figured, if I give good orders, I'll have a good ship. And if I give great orders, I will have a great ship. And so on the first day, he started barking orders to set sail and everything was going smoothly. Everybody was following orders, it was great. Second or third day out, submerged, they decided to run an exercise. They turned off the nuclear reactor manually and pretended they had a meltdown and they ran on battery power, it's called EPM. And Marquet decided to make it a little harder, see how his crew would respond under pressure. So he gave a simple order, ahead two thirds, which means run the boat two thirds its maximum speed. His number two in command standing right next to him, who incidentally had more experience on the boat than anybody else, two and a half years aboard the Santa Fe, repeated the command, ahead two thirds, and nothing happened. Marquet peers out from the side of his periscope and he sees Seaman Jones, a couple stripes on his arm, just sitting there squirming in his seat. Marquet could see it. Marquet says, Seaman Jones, what's the problem? And 
And Seaman Jones replies, sir, there is no two-thirds setting. Apparently on this slightly newer boat, there was just no two-thirds setting on the battery power. So he turns to his number two, he said, did you know this? He said, mm-hmm. He said, then why did you give the order? He said, because you told me to. And it's at that point Marquet realizes that he's aboard a ship that he doesn't understand and he has a crew trained for compliance. It's not like he can just turn around and come back and change his crew out or get another boat. This is his crew. And so he was forced to re-understand what leadership means. Leadership is not the captain knowing all the answers. Leadership is trusting that his people knew more than he did. Because the person who did know was Seaman Jones with two stripes on his arm who knew exactly how the ship worked. The people at the top have all the authority, but the people at the bottom have all the information. The goal is not to push the information up. The goal is to put, push the authority down. Trust people that they know how to do their jobs and when they offer you help, say yes. Admit you don't know things. Because when you admit you don't know things, people will help. When you say you know everything, it's not that people don't want to help. They just don't think you need it. Ask for and accept help. Take the risk to trust people. That's the next, next lesson. Bob Chapman, who's a dear friend of mine, runs a large manufacturing company in St. Louis called Barry Waymiller. Historically, in factories in this country, we treat management differently than we treat the people who work on a factory floor. For example, if you work in management and you need supplies, you go to the supply cabinet, you open it up, you take out pens and papers or whatever you need. If you work on the factory floor, you ask permission for, to go to the supply cage that's kept under lock and key so that someone else can sign out stuff that you may need. If you work in management, if you're going to be home late for work from work, you pick up the phone, you call your kids, you tell them you're going to be home late. If you work on a factory floor, you ask permission to go to the pay phone to call your kids to tell them you're going to be home late. And it creates this division. We think that because someone doesn't have a college education that they're untrustworthy. Nonsense. And so Bob took the risk of trust without any fanfare, without running any studies, without asking for anything in return. He simply ordered that all the locks be removed from all the cages and that people could sign out their own equipment if they wanted it. He took the risk of trust. He got rid of all the pay phones and put in company phones that anybody could use at any time. He got rid of all of the whistles that indicate when somebody should start work, when they should take a break, and when they should stop work. He figured if in management they know when to start their jobs, on a factory floor people know when to start their jobs. We don't need to blow whistles. He took the risk of trust, asking for nothing in return. Morale went up, theft went down. Because when we trust people, they rise to the occasion. And when we don't trust people, they rise to the occasion. Leadership means taking the risk of trust even if it goes the wrong way, because you'll be responsible for when something doesn't go right. This is one of the fun things about leadership. When everything goes right, you give the credit away. And when everything goes wrong, you take all the responsibility. That's what it means to lead. This is my favorite story of all. Remember who you are. There was an undersecretary of defense who was giving a speech at a large conference of like a thousand people. And he, he, was, he was recently retired. So he was a former undersecretary, one of the former undersecretaries of defense. And he was standing on the stage, giving his speech, his prepared remarks. And he, while he was talking, he was taking a sip out of a cup of coffee he had in this styrofoam cup. And he sort of looks down and smiles and interrupts his prepared remarks. And he says, you know, last year I was the secretary, I was the undersecretary. And I spoke at this exact same event in this exact same venue last year. Except last year, while I was still undersecretary, they flew me here business class. They had a car waiting for me to take me from the airport to the hotel. Someone had already checked me in and escorted me up to my room. The next morning I came downstairs, there was someone waiting for me in the lobby and they took me to this same venue. 
They took me in the back entrance, they took me into the green room, and they handed me a cup of coffee in a beautiful ceramic cup. He says, I'm no longer the undersecretary. I flew here coach. I took a taxi from the hotel to the airport. I checked myself in this morning. I took another taxi to the same venue. I walked in the front door. I found my way to the backstage. And when I asked somebody, do you have any coffee? He pointed to the coffee machine in the corner. And I poured myself a cup of coffee into this here styrofoam cup. He says, the lesson is, the ceramic cup was never meant for me. It was meant for the position I hold. I deserve a styrofoam cup. We all deserve styrofoam cups. As you become more successful, as you do well in life, you will be afforded many advantages. People will call you sir and ma'am, they'll carry your luggage, they'll hold doors open for you. They will bring you a cup of tea without you even asking for it. But it's not meant for you. It's meant for the position you hold. And when you move on, they will give all those things to the person who replaces you. Never ever forget that you only ever deserved a styrofoam cup. Go forth and do well. Thank you very, very much. He's so good. Isn't he so good? Hey, everybody. Thanks for jumping on. It's so good to see your other faces as well. <laughs> um, I adore Simon Sinek. I think it's mostly because I, I, I enjoy his voice as well. It's so calming and... Um, He's hot. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> um, but no, there's just so, so many, many, many true things that are very parallel to <clears throat> any business, anything that we do and everything that he says. And here we are, all of us on this call tonight, wanting to you know, learn how we can build a business. And we can't build a business without working on ourselves and trusting ourselves in how to become better leaders. And, you know, we always, we always say this. <clears throat> and one of the things that I listened to earlier before was that the number one thing that you have to constantly remind yourself is that if you're not working on yourself first, there is absolutely no way you can lead others, especially in Beachbody. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean you have to have, have six-pack abs. What it means is that you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. We're not talking about perfection here. It's about living our absolute best day-to-day -day and sharing in your journey with the people that are struggling right alongside you. And it, remember this whole like authority thing is that the whole point of us building teams of, you know, coaches is that your people are coaching you right back in return. I had to remind somebody of that today who, um, had, you know, went disappearing for a week. And, you know, what do we do as coaches? You know, we check in with our people. Uh, we tag them in our groups. We send them a little love, making sure they're okay. And the immediate response that I had gotten in return was, oh my gosh, I've been doing everything. I've just been really busy. Um, you know, but don't worry about me. I'm, I'm still on top of my game. And I was so happy to hear that. However, I needed to remind her how much I needed her in return. So remember to share and be vulnerable with the people who are in your challenge groups, letting them know that this isn't easy for you either. And guys, I'm here to share with you that being a coach is so hard. <laughs> Building a business, it's really hard. It's really hard and we're gonna have ups and we're gonna have downs and I need you guys to know that I struggle just as much as you guys do. <laughs> and it's really hard for me to say that because I know how much you guys like look to me for advice. This is not easy. Just like, you know, taking a college exam. I was saying to my daughter, she's like, 
it's so hard. I'm like, if it was hard, everybody, I mean, if it was easy, everybody would be able to do this. Okay. Anybody can quit. Okay. Anybody can quit, but not everybody can follow through. And it's just a matter of why you're doing this, how much you believe in it, and if the benefit outweighs the risk. And that comes from like a medical term too. You know, a surgeon will never do surgery unless the benefit outweighs the risk, no matter how much money that surgery costs. Okay, because whose life is at stake? All those family, all the people in that person's life, all of their family members. And so just take all of that into consideration that every single thing that you do has got to be worth it. And it doesn't mean it's easy. Okay. So I want to um, applaud you guys. Um, so many of us, <laughs> so many of us are on our way to Success Club. And when I say so many of us, that's me too. Um, I don't know why this is a, a difficult month, but it feels like every month is a difficult month. Um, and while last month, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I did differently last month than I did this month, but I'm going to blame six months ago for, for this month because every little action that you take now is going to pay off six months from now. Okay. So, um, Way to go, guys, for changing lives. We have Shauna, we have Courtney, we have Kim, we have Allie, we have Lindsay, and myself. We're all almost at Success Club Five. I think, all working. Allie, I think Allie just hit it today, this morning. See, and I wouldn't know that because we don't get those results yet, but congratulations, Allie. That's awesome. <laughs> but guys, listen, listen, this is, this is a non-negotiable and I have said this from day one that I started as a coach and this will be month 36 for me and I'm just letting you know that I'm not going to miss it and so in your own business it needs to become a non-negotiable in order for you to have compounding success. Has everybody finished that book? I hope or listen to that audible. It's the first book that we all recommend. Um, all right, so a couple of things, um, announcements, um, we have a new program coming up. It's the 80 day obsession. I'm sure it was announced at super Saturday and I'm going to ask you girls who went to like, give us a little update there in just a moment. Um, that will be, uh, I believe it comes out in January. Uh, the All Access promotion of $160 for the All Access Challenge Pack is continuing through the rest of this year. I cannot imagine them raising this price. I mean, even $200 when we first launched it, people were buying it. I mean, so I just think it's amazing that um, Carl is continuing uh, this price point through the rest of the year because guys, it's like they're getting all of these programs basically for 30 bucks. It's, it's, it's insane. You cannot get a gym membership for this inexpensive. And so when it comes to creating value for people, I really need you guys to understand the value yourself. Okay, um, I have a little lesson that I want to go over with everybody and how we can better. I want to talk about this out front, like, you know, how we can help people see the value of things. Um, it's, I'd like to have an open discussion about that. It's not necessarily about overcoming their objections or convincing them of something. It's no, no, really, do you understand? Let's, let's openly talk about this. Um, you know, going to the thing that, um, you know, Simon was saying about trust, you know, people got to trust you. So if you're honest with them about everything, then just, you know, lay it out for them. Um, you know, I don't like talking about price point up front, but it, at one point, I mean, it, it is a factor. I mean, you could send them the link 
However, when they open it, they're going to make a very quick snap judgment. So you have to give them buy-in before that even happens. Um, some other things, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I certainly did not notice this until I uh, read it, but the yoga studio now has pre and postnatal yoga workouts, which is incredible. Um, for you ladies who have small children and who know mamas who are having babies, and I, I, sir, I, have, I know a lot of mamas having babies. Um, and that's one of the things that they want to wait is get clearance from their doctors and before they jump into things and you know if you can get them on a post you know like a a prenatal yoga regimen before they have the baby i don't know if you guys know this but i didn't or or maybe you can tell me something different but you know when i had my kids we took lamas and so now they're called birthing classes and they don't necessarily even teach breathing techniques anymore which i thought to be a, like crazy. So, uh, because I don't know what I would have done without knowing how to breathe <laughs> when I was having a child. So yoga in that rest uh, in that reference can be so helpful. Um, also summit 2018 guys commit to it right now. Remember what I said, what you do right now is going to pay off in six months from now. Okay, what you can, what you commit to right now, okay, you have to commit six months before. You can't wait a month before summit and and sort of like be halfway in. You have got to commit to going now. This is part of your business, uh, just like events. All events are a part of your business, and summit is that time of year where all of us as coaches and there are some veteran coaches even on this team who have gone year after year after year and the value that you go whether it's the content that's delivered it's the relationships that are formed during that event it's the ups and the downs it's the it's the uh, new friendships of the people that you're seeing here on these calls in your challenge groups encourage your challengers to go it's not, I mean, the ticket is inexpensive. And um, just do it, commit to it now. A uh, couple more announcements. The UK launch is October 21st. It is under a month away from today. I'm so nervous because I am going to England. It's crazy. I'm so nervous. I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled to meet some of the people in which you have put into that group. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but there have been some new faces. Um, and I believe that if you, I don't believe it's too late. Okay. We're a month away. Now is like the perfect time, not just to create the hype, but to throw out another ad out there and just connect with some people in the UK because there are still tickets available and we are hosting event an event in between the two sessions. And I'm really excited. I just made these awesome labels that are going to go on a gift bag. Um, and inside the gift bag is going to be a notebook from Team Perseverance. And then uh, we have uh, cards made up that say Team Legacy with um, Inspire, Mentor, Grow, and Thrive. And they're all going to go in a little gift bag. Um, and I hope uh, that you guys can, you know, if you have someone attending this event, that you can, you know, tell me specifically what note you want to put into that gift card for them. So um, I'm just really, really excited to connect with all of them for you. Um, our next challenge group is going to be October 9th. It's a three week challenge group and it's somewhat fall themed. Um, October 30th will be when we release or start our clean week, which will be clean week rolling into a November 13th challenge. So those people who participate in clean week, they will have the opportunity 
to go ahead and upgrade with a full challenge pack to continue for the next three weeks. This is gonna be our new cycle. It's not a change in the weeks that we have. Um, it's just that we're not offering them a free product. Now, if you have people who are doing Beachbody On Demand, and you want to offer them that mo that time as well. Feel free to upgrade them to a clean week, you know, with uh, seven days of Shakeology. Um, but they don't have to. That's completely up to you. It's just that if people are not upgrading after those first two weeks, then we're going to move them on um, into either your clubhouse or your. Uh, meet me at the bar page or if you have your own group page i'm not sure how many other people have them this way we are always supporting our customers because not we are getting leads right now who are just getting beach body on demand and they are paying customers and we have to have a place to create value for them you know we have these groups of people who are showing up every single day what better group to put them in to see how we do it okay so um and gain a love for the products and you know what it might be a new way to even generate new coaches so um i think this is going to be an exciting new process and i'm thrilled about it um i did want to mention in december I have written down that our um, that we should start our challenge group in December on December 4th so we can do one week of a clean week if we want um, not a two week because Christmas is on that I think it's like the third Monday this way it you know we're not running a challenge group through Christmas and we could just take that as a complete family week i know a lot of kids are home from school um you have family in town so let's let's call that uh the week of christmas our gap week and then we will roll into our uh challenge group for the new year um thereafter we could start and we could talk about that we we usually sit together at some point before the end of the year and make a calendar for the year and we'll do that again like we did last year um i thought that was the best thing that was the best thing that we did this year um, um i was just doesn't it feel like we just did that like last week i know it's crazy like, i just feel like we just did that i know it's it's absolutely incredible um so um so i i wanted to um share something with you guys i um i signed up for this thing because you know we always got to grow and you know i don't know if you guys have i'm sure you have there's all of these um there's all of these now that we're coaches we're targeted you know, just like we target our, our niche market, other coaches are targeting us to, so that we can be coached as business leaders, right? I don't know if any of you have, am I frozen? Um, I don't know if any, am I frozen? Am I frozen, guys? Y'all are. <laughs> 